Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to participate in today's uh, debate on Bill C-442, an act respecting the National Lyme Disease Strategy. I'd like to start off, uh, Mr. Speaker, by stating my own personal support for Bill C-442, and that I'm pleased to see that uh, most, if not all, of the government members will be showing such support as well. I'm also pleased how the federal government is working with the provinces, the territories, and the stakeholders to address Lyme disease and why the bill would be a sound complement to these efforts. Mr. Speaker, as members of this House are aware, Lyme disease is a rapidly emerging infectious disease in North America and in Europe and is transmitted to humans from the bite of infected black-legged ticks. Over the past few years, I've met with a number of constituents from my riding of Dufferin Caledon who suffer from Lyme disease as well as family members and friends of sufferers. They have, they have relayed to me the symptoms they live with and the, difficulty, the difficulties they have faced within the medical system. In October of 2012, I met with a constituent of my riding whose name I will not use for privacy reasons, but who has been suffering from Lyme disease for seven years now. She informed me of the difficulty in diagnosing the disease, and is similarly to multiple, which is similar to multiple sclerosis. She also informed me of the type of treatment she's been receiving and gave me some detail about what it was like to be living with this disease. This constituent is quite passionate about raising awareness of this issue. She organized signatures for a petition which I had the honour of tabling in this House. The petition called for the government to increase its efforts on behalf of those suffering with Lyme disease. That brings me uh, to the bill before us today. Numerous residents of Dufferin Caledon have written to me regarding Bill C-442, and I'm honoured to be able to speak to this bill. The number of reported cases of Lyme disease in Canada has increased ninefold from 2003 to 2012 to over 300 cases annually. One of our problems is the actual number of cases of Lyme disease is estimated to be three times higher than those cases which are actually reported. Even more troubling, based on current trends, the Public Health Agency of Canada estimates that these numbers will continue to rise. In the majority of cases, Lyme disease systems may include fever, headache, and fatigue. Fortunately, if diagnosed early, Lyme disease can be treated quickly and effectively with antibiotics. In cases of late diagnosis, where the disease has spread through the body, the burden of illness and the cost to the health system increase exp exponentially. Suffice it to say, if left undiagnosed, the impacts can be devastating. Let me put in perspective why we need to make progress in raising awareness of the challenges of Lyme disease poses and the importance of early diagnosis and treatment. This applies as much to the public as large as it does to the health professionals. If Canada were to indeed be managing the increased rates of Lyme disease, the differences in costs associated with early versus late diagnosis treatment are startling. The Public Health Agency estimates that the potential cost of early diagnosis in 2020 would be just over $8 million annually. However, for late diagnosis, that figure could raise to $338 million. Fortunately, our government has made significant research investments in areas related to Lyme disease. Indeed, since 2006, we've invested over $4.5 million. We have established improved surveillance, specifically aimed at Lyme disease, so that action can be taken quickly and effectively. And we're also providing federal leadership building consensus, mobilizing partnerships, and promoting education and awareness. Research has shown, Mr. Speaker, that climate change is bringing Lyme disease carrying ticks further into Canada. Understanding and tracking their movement is an important part of any future strategy to combat Lyme disease. Mr. Speaker, supporting research to generate new insights on how Lyme disease is evolving, why its impacts vary so widely, and how it can be treated is central to our efforts. That is why we're committed to supporting research on the range of strains of tick-borne pathogens and their geographic location as well, the epidemiology and interventions of the disease in Canada. 
This will help us better forecast how Lyme disease is spreading and how its impacts can be contained. But the federal government cannot and should not act alone. With Lyme disease now a national reportable disease, it should also come as no surprise that we've been working closely with the provinces and the territories. Early measures include exploring how we can work together in communicating the risks of Lyme disease to the public and medical professions. We're also reviewing current Lyme disease guidelines to ensure that they're based on the best evidence available. This will help us collectively to educate Canadians in identifying and protecting themselves from Lyme disease. Mr. Speaker, these collaborative efforts just don't occur in a vacuum. This is an integral part of the Public Health Agency of Canada's approach to managing infectious diseases. The agency's key areas of action are surveillance, prevention and control, research and diagnosis, and engagement, education and awareness. Mr. Speaker, let me um, uh, summarize just a few of the ways that work in these areas is providing real results for Canadians struggling with Lyme disease and their families. The Public Health Agency is conducting surveillance of Lyme disease in Canada and developing strategies to encourage preventive behaviour. Investing in new laboratory methods to improve our surveillance of the tick that causes Lyme disease. Undertaking research into new strains and pathogens of tick-borne diseases and updating public health guidelines on Lyme disease. The agency is also working to develop new approaches to better educate both health care providers and the general public, especially those risk of infection about Lyme disease. Together, these efforts will equip all stakeholders to better respond to Lyme disease. Mr. Speaker, our government's current leadership in this area, coupled with the positive principle of this bill before us today, will serve to focus on protecting the health and safety of Canadians, recognize the need of action for leadership to mitigate the impact of Lyme disease, drive the imperative for evidence-based decision-making and sharing best practices, acknowledging the importance of collaboration to raise the awareness of the disease and how to avoid it and how to diagnose and treat it, disseminate data of the real impact Lyme disease has already had on too many Canadian families. That is why, Mr. Speaker, as I said at the outset, I'm supporter, supportive of the principle of this, of this bill and look forward to reviewing the work that is undertaken by the Health Committee. And I encourage all members of this House to support the bill. Thank you very much.